All right, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming to this game. Uh, <laughs> goodness. Uh, 27 fouls for them, 23 fouls for us, uh, made for a uh, uh, not a very flow-oriented basketball game. Uh, it was a little painful to watch from the sideline, so, and I'm one of the coaches, uh, Ray Deak. Uh, so I'm sure for the fans out there, it was a, it, it was a tough to tough to watch. But uh, I like our kids' uh, uh, resilience and perseverance. Um, we had a very tough overtime, double overtime win at William and Mary to finish our conference on Wednesday night, and uh, we had a long trip back, and uh, we have one day to get ready for this uh, uh, rescheduled game of uh, NJIT. Very thankful for them and their administration for uh, uh, playing this game because they could have easily said, <coughs> "Excuse me." Um, I didn't want to play, but uh, very, very thankful to their coaching staff and their athletic director uh, for accomplishing, along with our administration, for pushing this uh, through Mr. Hathaway. Uh, so very, very kudos to them. It uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, gets us to 14 and 14. Gets us to 14 and 14. Um, we'll have a very tough game against Drexel uh, next Friday at 2:30, first round, and uh, if we can take care of that, uh, puts us above 500. So lots of good things uh, coming our way. Excuse me. <coughs> Questions? Hey, Lo. Um, you had a pretty good game on the boards as well as 11 points to go with that. But talk about your matchup with Uzu and Walko and just like this game overall, just uh, down low. Um, first of all, Uzu is, she's like a, go a god like post. She's not really like a <coughs> post player. And um, First play was difficult because when I get the ball and I put it down, you have got just putting their, their hands in and I'm turning over the ball. So, and then I got my point, most of my point off from rebound and I realized that I was bigger than, I'm bigger than them, so I got to use that advantage. So I guess that was what I used against them. Hey, well, you've improved a lot over the course of the season. What do you think has been most helpful to your development? I think um, being coachable, like my coach always say, uh, pay attention to her. Sometimes we're players and we're young, so we always think we're right and all that, but we're not. So I think because I'm listening and want to learn, that's why I'm getting ready. Coach Collin, was there anything you noticed in today's game that you're glad you were able to pick up on before the CAA tournament starts? Um, listen, to be able to not, we would have practiced today. If this game wasn't scheduled, we would have practiced today for the ability to put the uniform on and compete against another opponent and for it to be a close game. Um, you know, that's not what your intent is. Going in every, you, know, you, you wish and hope that every game you win by 30. It's, you know, but at the same time, the reason you compete and you play is because you want to be challenged. And so I want to give lots of credit to NJIT and their coaching staff, and they, they challenged us. And you know, whether it was guard-like posts that were pushing up on our bigs or their guards were hitting some darn shots, uh, I don't give them credit. Uh, so from that uh, point of view, uh, it pushed us. And instead of just practicing and maybe thinking, oh, we had an okay practice, or let me grade this practice. It was an A, or maybe it was a B. Hey, guess what? There's a score up. We won 77-68. Lots of free throws for both. You know, we hit our free throws mostly down the stretch. We remounted the ball. We got the ball inside when we wanted to, uh, to E or to Rudy. Um, you know, our, our, our guards ran and pushed the darn ball. We... Uh, Try to solve our transition and defense uh, in the in the second half. So, yeah, you can work on those things, and that's what we did work on, and that's what you can go to. We'll be off tomorrow, and that's what uh, we'll kind of rest our laurels on for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday when we practice. Uh, get after it, and then uh, we'll taper it down a bit on uh, Thursday, and then we play Friday. Does it mean something to be able to even the season record? Yeah, it means a lot. It's absolutely where we were um, in January. We were one in four in conference, and we fought back and got to eight and eight. Uh, so we finished seven and four in our last eleven. Um, for us to get to fourteen and fourteen, we've been at five hundred all year long. Uh, miss one, lose one, up one, win two. Um, you know, young group, but at the same time, and that's probably sounds like a bit of an excuse. But uh, we've slowly gotten better. We've gotten our wind. Um, won three in a row now. Won a very tough one against uh, Drexel. Won a double overtime at William and Mary, and now uh, this one. Uh, and hopefully this gives us tons and tons of confidence uh, going down to, down to Maryland, uh, Showplace Arena on, uh, for uh, Friday against Drexel. Coach, 18 turnovers for your yeah. team in this one, but still right. four players in double figures. Yeah. How, how much does that speak to the talent of your team? Uh, it, speaks, it speaks to the talent. You're right, Rich, but at the same time, 18 turnovers the other mm -hmm. night. Uh, 
we played William & Mary in a double overtime game, and I believe we had 21 turnovers. And they played us 2-2-1 back to 2-3 all game long. So those are things that instead of like just getting on them and just giving them a really difficult time and being, you know, a bit yelling at them, things of that nature, guess what? You can watch a little bit of film, and you can talk to them, and they can hopefully learn, and they do. They've been watching film a lot. Uh, e comes in all the time in the office with Coach Ravel. Uh, the guards come in with Coach King. Uh, we're all watching film. Coach is very, very big on that, and she comes back. And so we'll watch film. We'll uh, address those things, and uh, I, th I think it's great for our uh, learning curve. Yeah, Alo talked about being coachable. Is, is that something you see throughout your entire team? Uh, she's not coachable at all. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> she's cameras and that phone camera that Brian's working on. <laughs> Love you, Brian. Um, <laughs> listen, he has been absolutely very, very coachable. Um, along with the rest of our team. Um, we have a, a new one in, in Angie White, who's a transfer sitting out. Uh, she's coachable. We've been working around doing individuals and, uh, you know, very receptive. And all our guards have been very receptive to teaching to Coach King and uh, Coach Orbell. And then obviously our head coach, Krista, is very demanding. It's very, very hard on our players, and our, and our kids understand that. That's what they signed up for. Uh, most of them knew, and they – they get after it, and uh, you know, coach has done a great job of establishing that culture. She's in her eighth year here, and uh, that's that's something uh, that's not like a it's just going to happen. We expect that, and uh, our kids are coachable, and, and we love that, and uh, we love that give and take. But at the same time, we listen to them as well. So it's a little bit of a back and forth. There's times where we're not listening, we're telling, but uh, you know, they do a great job of being uh, receptive and being coachable. Coach, just talk about the development of the freshman on the team and Kelly and. Crystal yeah. and Nalo here, just like, you know, all season seems like he's been through so much. Can you just talk yeah. about that? Uh, Crystal starting out, you know, all of a sudden got thrust into a starting position and has been running the point. Uh, and sometimes you still have to understand that uh, you can't just expect her to play 40, 45 minutes. And, you know, like the other night in double overtime, she played 45 minutes and you, she's going to make some mistakes and you have to be able to live. What we can't live with is some really glaring knucklehead mistakes, like the one that she had from half court. She threw an alley-oop to AO, but the alley-oop was above the backboard. And that, I believe, is a one-possession or two-possession game. And that's that's where, uh, can you watch film and can you get her to understand, hey, that's probably not the best pass. Let's run some offense. So she's coming along great. She's very, very receptive. You talked about coaching and receptive. She's somebody who's very much that. With Kelly, she plays a couple of positions for us. She plays the two for us at times. At times, she's played the three. And at times, when we go small, she plays the four for us. So for her to be receptive, she's fought through a little hamstring issue. Um, and not to get down and to get down on herself, uh, you know, it's been, it's been great. And then uh, when she gets her feet set, man, she can shoot that rock. And then uh, we, E, we've already talked about, so I don't know if I want to waste any more time. About it. <laughs> but uh, E, once again, just like with the, all the other freshmen, have been has been uh, quite quite uh, forceful in the post and uh, been learning. And uh, I know we keep asking her to get more offensive touches, but can I just tell you, um, my first stint here at Hofstra, we had a young lady by the name of Jess Fuller from Queens, um, and she was absolutely fantastic in terms of how. She patrolled the paint and how she let our guards occasionally make some defensive mistakes on the perimeter. And that's what E already in her freshman year is getting towards because she controls the paint. And then when you add Rudy and DTP, uh, Deanna Thomas Palmer, and uh, just a good little subbing rotation with our fives, I think uh, good things are absolutely ahead of us.